Hello everybody, I'm setting up the camcorder. I was gonna hit the record button after I did this, but then I realized, you know, that's kind of part of the video. The part of the video where you set up, you quickly set up the camera as best you can, and you kind of try to get into the, um, the frame okay, and you see if your hair is somewhat passable, uh, you know, and you're kind of shuffling them around a little bit. Uh, the light, obviously, I mean, there's light shining from behind me, but uh, to take care of that would, would take a, a while longer, so um, this is good enough for me. And probably the light will adapt too. So, anyways, uh, yeah, the camera is pointing up a little bit, so uh, I don't care, it doesn't matter. Um, so, okay, guys, this is my third overall video from Carlo Vivari. And I kind of started filming it uh, earlier, but uh, so this is my second try. Something happened in between, and I had to I had to pause it. So this is my second try. My hair is completely parted for some reason, but it doesn't matter. You know, whatever, whatever. I mean, who cares, really? I mean, it does kind of bother me, but if I get, you know, I don't. I, there's nothing I can do. You know, that's... anyways, um, there's really nothing I can do, and who cares? All right, so I'm just out of a press screening uh, for a film that I really wanted to uh, wanted to talk about, and maybe I'll just grab the catalog just to have a quick sort of a reference point so that I don't get too lost. As usual, before I start, I do want to say that these videos are not uh, reviews, and I do specify that in the title of the of the videos themselves. These aren't reviews. I'm not particularly into reviews. I find the whole reviewing thing a bit boring, unless it's done by a handful of people that I still do read. Very very few though. And, um, and these are just thoughts that I have after watching the film. And somehow they coincide with my views about life, existence in general. And it's just a way for me to show you that, you know, the films themselves are just are a starting point. And uh, there's no such thing as good or bad when it comes to a film. There really isn't. And then when it comes to art, there really isn't such a thing as good or bad art. Let's get out of that mindset, you know. Uh, you can like something and you can't like something. That doesn't mean that not, someone else is not allowed to like it. And I'm saying it. <laughs> and I've been, uh, you know, that, that was kind of like, that, that's how I was raised. I was, uh, that's, what, that's how I was brought up to think. Anyways, I don't want to get lost in these things. No one has time. No one has time. So, um, Let There Be Light is the film that I want to talk about. It's a Slovak film, and uh, so far it's been one of the more interesting films that I've seen at Kado Vivari. In fact, I'm just out of the screening room, and it made me think about a lot of things, so I thought it would be a good film to talk about. Uh, this is a Slovak film, like I said, and it's by Marko Škop, whose previous film, Eva Nova, was very interesting. Uh, and I really loved. So I was quite looking forward to watching this film. Eva Nova, the lead character in that movie, was an elderly actress. In this film, the lead character is a 40-year-old man who's a family man working abroad, uh, away from his native country of Slovakia. He actually works in Germany, but he returns home for uh, the Christmas break. And, uh, you know, while there, he finds himself playing some sort of the type of role you know, you know, he finds himself playing the role of the master of the house, so to speak, again. But it's not that easy because, uh, you know, it, something happens. Uh, the eldest of his three kids, for example, well, this is the main aspect of the story. It turns out he's a member of a youth paramilitary group. And the youth paramil paramilitary group or paramilitary youth group, whatever you want to call it. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Um, uh, is involved in a, in something in a tragic and terrible accident, if you can call it that. We find out early on that a f that a friend of his uh, or a classmate of his teenage son uh, committed suicide, and we also find out that he may have something to do with it. Uh, the kind the film is kind of a slow burn. We don't find out everything right away, but I do feel that it's it's okay to say that. Uh, in fact, it's right here in the program that. Uh, the fact that he is a member of a paramilitary youth organization is important. And this is one of the main aspects that I wanted to talk about. But before I do, I want to point out, this is sort of a slow burner of a Western. It does have its Western elements, especially in its leading character, the 40-year-old uh, male who is somewhat of a, of a cowboy figure. He, he's out in the wilderness, wilderness, wilderness slash uh, Germany. 
Germany represents sort of the wilderness, the way out west world. And then he, when he comes back, he finds himself having to protect his domestic abode and his family, you know, his wife and his kids, his territory, let's say. But actually, the film is somewhat of a satire on the idea of masculinity and its impact in society because it seems like some, very often the more he gets involved and the more he creates, he makes more damage, than, more harm than good. He does more harm than good to the situation. So that's another interesting aspect. Uh, but I, do, I did particularly want to focus on uh, the aspect of the uh, paramilitary youth organization. Yes, this is a problem that I feel is sp especially taking place in Europe. I'm a European, so I see it from a European perspective. I have been hearing recently that it has been a problem in Slovakia particularly. There's been a rise in nationalism, but more or less so, so many of the countries in, in Europe are, uh, have this nationalist uh, ideas on the rise, you know, and they're very violent nationalists, you know, there are reasons to be it, somewhat of a, of, of, you know, want to protect your country, that's fine, but being a nationalist is usually accosted to more negative ideas, and uh, that's what I want to get at. Um, how does a, a young guy get into that sort of a behavior? How does a young guy become part of a youth, a paramilitary youth organization? And why is this actually happening? Because this is a real problem. Well, to me, it's just another sign, and this is what I wanted to discuss, of the fact that we're really not taking care of our arts and our cultures. Because if we were, then young people would be getting into arts instead. That sounds like a naive perspective on the world. Well, when I say art, and especially the way I mean art, is not particularly related to intellectuality or intellectualism, which has done more harm than good in the past. When I think of the revolutions of 68, they weren't always good, and sometimes they were very violent. I'm talking about getting into art itself. What I mean by that is, uh, I'm gonna give a precise example, and I did think about this, and this is the first example I always think about when I try to per uh, portray uh, cinephilia, for example. The Birth of a Nation is one of the most famous films of the silent era. It's a film made by D.W. Griffith, I believe, in 1916. Bear with me, I might be wrong on the year there, but I think it is 1916 or thereabouts. And uh, why is it frowned upon? I mean, first of all, it is technologically it's beautiful and it marked a real important advancement in the history of cinema. But it's frowned upon because it is an amazingly racist uh, movie that uh, is definitely critical of... Uh, well, it, it, long story short, it looks favor favorably at the Ku Klux Klan. So that's reason enough to frown upon its ideology. But as a film, do we consider it a bad film because of that? No. My stance on it is no. Obviously, I disagree with its ideological uh, reasoning, with the ideals that it represents, but I accept it as a masterpiece also because of its perspective, because it is a racist film seen from a racist point of view. And so it's right there in front of you and you can see it. If we didn't have it, we would only be able to imagine it. We would only be able to imagine what the racist perspective looks like not being a racist, at least not being aware of, of your racist ways, you know, because uh, we all more or less are disrespectful of another one's culture. You can never be too careful and we're only human, so we make mistakes all the time, right? But I'm talking about real racism. Uh, D.W. Griffith also probably didn't think of himself as racist or is racism being a bad thing. So as a film, it is completely, uh, it, it is, a, is as faithful a representation of, of racism as it, it's gonna get. So the fact that we can actually see it and it's there for us to see is great because I'm totally for seeing every perspective that you possibly can. I'm totally against ideological, uh, Censorship, therefore, I'm totally against also political correctness. We should be allowed to express our opinions no matter how vile they may come across to other people. For example, you know, I have my own pet themes that I hate. I hate seeing animals killed on screen, right? But uh, some people, as crazy as that sounds to me, don't care about that at all. It's not their concern at all. I hate seeing animals killed on screen and I never forgive it. But uh, it's there, I can see it, and seeing it makes me more uh, hateful towards it. So the same could be with racism. But if we talk about the birth of a nation, and I know, I know this, the title of this is uh, Let There Be Light, but I do want to make a point, and it was inspired by watching this film, and I want to commit it uh, on, digital, on digital video. If we do look at the, the birth of a nation specifically, that film historically actually has uh, an, a negative, uh, had a negative um, effect. 
because it actually led to the rebirth of the Ku Klux Klan. The, that organization was popularized again and uh, the film itself was screened as part of a sort of an initiation process for people who wanted to become members of the Ku Klux Klan, right? Perfect, all right, so despite, uh, aside from the fact that yes, art is definitely dangerous and uh, Burroughs said it best when he said, um, the writer Bur Burroughs said it best when he said that writing you have to, as a writer you have to be aware that whatever you write can have extreme consequences on yourself but also on the people who are reading it. Writing is an actual dangerous act. Fine, uh, being aware of it is actually great because you know that there's a dangerous side to the arts and uh, you know it's not like we're reading something that's come from the sky like you know some godlike and angelic thing. In fact the the way in which the Bible itself has so many evil kind of writings on it goes to show that it is a wonderful work of art that you can interact with openly. Uh, so, uh, back to the, the birth of a nation. Yes, this dangerous, it, the dangerous side of it is that it led to a rebirth of the Ku Klux Klan. But, here's what, it, what I mean by, like, what, so I'm actually arguing in favor of it and I do think that it's a masterpiece. Uh, because of its perspective and at the same time that perspective led to the rebirth of a racist and violent organization Yes, because being interested in the, in the arts is being open to the perspective all perspectives Not just the perspective of D.W. Griffith. It's also being open to the complete opposite perspective of D.W. Griffith, right? You have to watch it, but you have to also watch D.W. Griffith's perspective, the racist perspective. You have to watch the racist perspective and the anti-perspective. You have to be able to appreciate the ways in which those uh, perspectives are brought to life so that you can at least hang on to something when you're experiencing a work of art that can be a reference point, a guide, so to, sp so to speak, uh, to actually decoding whatever is being told in these works of art. But, you know, also appreciating the way in which they are being represented. These, the, the things that are being said are, are being represented. Um, this is an interest in the art. It's the, an interest in the art is something that is far more complete than, uh, than being interested in just one thing. Um, so, to me, you know, the fact that we are not nurturing culture is a shame because it leads to instead an extremism of ideals. So the youth somehow actually is attracted, whether it's a majority or a minority, the fact that it is happening is crazy to me. Uh, but it's also happening because we're not teaching young people, young adults or even children to get into arts in a proper way. If we do, it's a very academic and dry way, which is something that we have to avoid at all costs. Because if that becomes an excessive point, uh, thing to take, it leads to hate, and hate leads to violence. Which is why a lot of the discourse around the Me Too movement is counterproductive. We all, you know, we all want the liberation of women. We've been wanting it since Rimbaud, since we've read Rimbaud. Even if we haven't, you know, we all want everyone to be safe. We don't want everyone to be happy, because I don't believe that everyone has a right to be happy. I believe everyone has a right to be safe. But, you know... This is a more complex discourse that I don't particularly want to get into. But to me, the fact that these um, organizations exist, these paramilitary organizations exist, is insane, but also as a result of the fact that we're not encouraging, or we haven't found the right way to encourage pe young people to get into arts and culture, which would possibly even help them express the frustrations that would lead them to join a youth, um, a paramilitary youth organization. I hope you're, you get what you, I mean, my thoughts are very simple here. You know, I really believe that the future and the well-being of the future generations and part, uh, such a large part of why I'm doing this, you know, I'm, I'm not, you know, I don't have a, a stable job and I've completely, you know, I'm nine to five and I've completely dedicated my life to talking about the arts in a, hopefully in a very real and passionate and, and down to earth way is because I want to try and uh, spread that thought around, like promote the idea that the arts are important because they really, really do uh, help uh, help future generations, help shift away from more violent and unhealthy things that can be done, uh, that are being done, as we're seeing, you know, spread of a lot of hateful ideology. But, you know, this is, these are, this is not a thing that can be promoted by people posting Instagram photos of them at cocktail parties at a film festival, for example. And I'm using that as an example because I go to so many film festivals and it annoys the crap out of me, you know. 
So you gotta work. You gotta find a way to, to communicate this to people. I'm not saying that there's anything particularly wrong with cocktail parties. I'm not a big fan of them. You know, I meet a lot of friends there and stuff. But, but uh, you know, let's let's put as much effort into actually having discussions about the arts, not just movies, but all of the arts and how future generations and the youth can benefit from it. Then and uh, let's put as much effort into that as we put into uh, making selfies for our Instagram stories to, to show people how great our life is because you know what? That's gonna make people feel even more left out. And uh, it's also gonna cheapen uh, what we do, uh, the work that we do. And uh, that leads to more frustration in the industry, but also in the entire way, everyone becomes frustrated as a result. It's a shame because you know, art is all about communication. Man, how long did, did that take? Such a huge rant. So um, I wanted to make a point about, you know, the, the generation split that this film shows to, um, it's kind of hard for me to, to make these videos short. I feel like I do have a lot to say, but uh, I mean, 15 minutes, you know, God bless anyone who's watching these films. I know there aren't many of you, and, uh, but it's okay. You know, I don't, I don't mind that. That's not, uh, that's not a big problem to me. In fact, I like the charm that comes with the communication to, to a smaller group of people. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a small community, so to speak, but, but good, uh, sort of a community. A message just popped up on my screen there, but I didn't even have time to, to read it, so... Anyways, um, there, it's a generation problem. I'm gonna end it with this. During the screening... By the way, go watch it. It's an interesting film. It's a kind of a slow burn thriller slash domestic drama slash modern contemporary western. But it's, a, it's an interesting film. Marco Schkopp, I'm gonna be interviewing him for Fred Film Radio. Interview is gonna be up soon. I'm gonna be doing it in the next few days. We still haven't figured out a time yet, I think. Oh no, I think we have in two days, I think. But, um... The gener it's a generational problem. And, and uh, the older people are, are very much responsible for what's happening. There was a moment in the film that actually helped me say this, and I'm gonna see this, and I'm gonna close the video with this thought. Uh, during the video, uh, the father is talking to his uh, his older son, uh, the one who's in the paramilitary organization, youth organization, and he asks him something along the lines of, what do you want to do with your life? And he says that he doesn't want to study, he wants to start a company with his friends. And, he, and the father, I guess, asks him, what friends? You know, well, they're friends that I know on Instagram and on Facebook. I know that they're my friends because they put likes on my on my posts on my, or my photos sometimes. And so everyone is laughing, but uh, I feel that laugh wasn't a genuine laughter because it was a joke, because it's not a particularly funny joke. It's a legitimate observation, right? Uh, but I guess it shows that uh, the older people, it, it was a it's a way of protecting themselves and the structures that these people actually support and they are supported by. They don't understand that it's, you know, a like on Instagram and on, and a like on social media and all of these digital forms actually is capital. Um, it's, a, it's an important form, form of capital today. And so it shouldn't really be laughed at. It should be understood and it should be embraced. And uh, the reason that this kind of type of snob, snob, snobbish behavior, uh, this type of snobbery is also the reason I think why uh, people are having great difficulties in helping others understand that uh, art and culture are extremely important for our well-being right now, but also for the well-being of future generations. Uh, we shouldn't underestimate that, and we need to figure out a way to, to communicate that. Guys, Toda Vida Argentina. This is a reference for a friend of mine. Bye.